Hi, everyone. Welcome back. We're continuing on. Matter of fact, I'm just continuing on from filming. I just did that peony one there. And, you know, with the brush-ups, we're doing brush-ups. Brush-ups are real quick little lessons that are kind of... I'm going to show you some of the techniques I've done in the last two years on the channel and quick little paintings to help set that. And uh, we're doing flowers right this very second, but we're going to be doing landscapes and uh, wildlife, westerns, and, you know, the horses that I'm going to paint there. So we're going to do a lot of stuff. One of the things I did with my students that was hilarious and so eye-opening for them is to, you know, and, and brush-ups like this is a real great way to do this, um, is to take something and do something that you would never really do and then try to turn it into a painting. That opens up your mind and your creativity. I know it sounds crazy, but it really works. First off, this is the, the normal palette that I use. You just saw me use it on the last one. It's the Hansa Yellow, Daria Light Yellow, Yellow Oxide, the Naphtha Red Light, uh, Burnt Sienna, Pine Green, Thalo Blue, uh, red violet, quinacridone violet, white. This is the thickened extender, so it's the normal extender that I have here. And I add the acrylic thickener to it just a tiny bit and it turns it into a gel. And this gel you can leave on your palette for weeks, it will not dry. But I use it for thin, thick applications and you'll see that in the last couple videos that we've posted up here on the channel. So I've been doing these little 8x10 boards and I have a lot of fun with them and try to do quick little paintings and stuff with them. Especially this time of year, they're just great for gifts and, and stuff like that. And so what I did a couple of years ago, I had a bunch of friends into the gallery, to the studio. And I said, you know, they were saying, how do we loosen up and stuff like that? And I said, well, you just go grab a color, color you never used before. And I said, you toss it into the background, get real wild. And I'd go around and I'd say, get a little bit more wild, toss a little bit more stuff. And I said, guys, you're not going to paint it. We're just tossing stuff into the background. So you don't have to worry about painting it because you're not going to paint that one. And so then they tossed more stuff in, got really wild and crazy. I said, awesome. Everyone's great. Now pass your boards to the right. And they had to pass their board to the person sitting next to them. And now I said, now create a painting. And it was a wonderful, wonderful uh, experience. They were all like, oh my God. But it was some of the prettiest stuff all of them said that they ever did because they never would have done something like that. And it totally affected them. See, this is what happens to us. We get locked into these little cocoons as artists and our creativity doesn't go out. And so we used to do exercises like that many, many years ago and that would break that. So let's do something like that. Let's grab a color. Like for me, it's it's like the, the violet, maybe violet and a little bit of red. Some of the, I'm not a real violet person and red person. Let's put a bit of extender into it, the thin extender there, three quarter inch brush. This is just a light gray kind of background. I sand it, even sand it right through to the darkness of the board. That, that's fine. You know, none of that's going to hurt it, this at all. We're going to get real casual. And you go put something on that you normally would never do and get a little bit crazy, a little bit wild with it. And, and uh, so, you know, you can soften some of it out, but leave some of it wild because this is gonna cause us to do something that's totally, completely different, okay? And yeah, you know, and do not burn this board. <laughs> you know, I have some ways to say, okay, oh, that one's going to the burn pile. No, you don't, you try things. And when I started doing this and I started looking at some of Richard Smith stuff and doing this and he put that on, I was just like, whoa, he did this stuff. And it was just like so creative and so the imagination. And yeah, this is how you do it. I'm going to take a little burnt sienna, a little bit of green, one of my favorite ones to do, and just push some of that in here as well. Okay, so we'll just drop some of that down. What is this all going to be? I'm going to probably do some smaller flowers. I'm going to let it talk to me today. Just use some of the techniques. But see, I love, see, I love this kind of stuff. This broken. You just take your brush and you grab that. See, that's just beautiful broken color. You know, what we call it, not, it's not the color uh, theory term of broken color. It is fracturing the color, breaking the color, the edges of the color. Let's just pull some of that down. See, that's just real pretty stuff here and different. You know, sometimes, boy, I think you could just frame some of those. They just look wild. Now, let's go in and let's start. Let's take my number eight that I did here and let's just start painting. Now, if I want to paint up on top of this, I'll use my paint. I'll go mostly acrylic. 
Uh, maybe I'll add a little bit of the gel here to this. That causes, I've, I've noticed, and you'll, once you mix this up and start painting with it, you'll see it instantly slides easier, it, it moves easier, it keeps the paint thick, it's really a lot of fun. Maybe a bit of yellow into that, a bit of burnt sand, some of this into gray it down a bit here, but we'll keep it kind of thick here. And let's just add, I want to stay away from that right there a bit. And let's just add a couple of pretty, and I'll let this mix right into the background here, right like that. We'll add a couple of pretty little, like, flower blossoms there. You know, we'll add a couple of them, maybe one coming back down this side over here. Run down there like that. We'll, we'll do a couple of different kinds of blossoms here, so... So we'll let that pick up, see that right into that background there. And it does, you know, it, if you can take these and it's hard, let me tell you, everything that I teach you here on the channel, it looks easy when I do it because I do it a lot, but it's hard and it takes practice, okay? But everyone, you can do this. It just takes practice, that's all. You know, I mean, that all art, all good art takes practice. Let's just leave that. That's just kind of pretty. And so, see, if I want the white to stand out, I'll start using it thicker and thicker here. And I lay my brush down and just do quick little strokes because there's a lot of paint on the surface here. And I just do quick little strokes. I want to soften that edge. I'm going to pinch wipe my brush, put in a little bit of the gel, and just quickly pull right through it to soften that edge, the movement there. Maybe leave just a touch a mark or so here but see if i want to lift some of that off i'll take a bit of the gel i'll use the gel to lift off because it keeps it thick see and so i still get that movement and stuff so i still got a thickness to my brush not pulling all the way down to the the base of that of the color here so let's just push a bit of an edge here right in there like that that's just kind of a pretty little Pretty little flower. They're fun. It, it's fun to try some of this stuff and to figure out, okay, how am I going to get around all of that red there? And what am I going to do with it? You know, you start to... And I'm doing this right with you guys here. I haven't painted anything like this. So you can see my, uh, my thought process and everything. I like to create right in front of you. But this is what I do at the end of every paint day that I've done for 35 years. I sit down, I use up my palette, and I paint quick little things like this. And this is what keeps me creative and moving forward. Is I just try all different kinds of things. And a lot of them don't work. You never see them. They don't work. I just go, wow, okay, I'm not going to do that again. And, but I save all of them. I have all of them. I love them. You know, some of them are, su some of them surprise the heck out of me. Someone walks in the gallery and says, I want to buy that. Really? <laughs> you know, and, and has that happened to you? You just like, go, wow, that really? Let's take some of this red. Let's lighten it up to a lighter little red. Maybe that will make some pretty light, fun little flowers here that we can push around the composition here in other ways. Give just some movements of that, you know, and some other marks that's just going to say, yeah, these, these reds, this, what's back there is actually red flowers. Let's just tap some of this color together so it's modeled on the brush, so it's not real perfect. And we'll do a smaller, maybe multi-petal little flower idea here. Some of them, as they get down here, can have some more of the heavier red in it. So it changes a bit. Just try. Try some fun things here. Let's take a little burnt sienna. Push that into the center there. Usually when I take like a burnt sienna and stuff, I'll, you know, I'll push it into my background as well someplace because I like the, the, the warmth of the burnt sienna, especially with this because that red is like a little bit cool there, okay? And uh, let's come in and so we push that in. Let's push a softer, maybe even a little bit of the pink over here. Just a bit more color here. And so some of this out here, see, doesn't really need to be too much other than the marks, you know, other than color marks here. We have our main, and I can pull the interest. I'll put a little thicker paint white here, right up on the front here. So I keep these, these couple of petals. You know, flowers 
really only need a couple of petals to really give them the interest. The rest of them can be really soft, okay? So you don't need that much. Let's put a bit of that light right into some of this pink right here. And we'll pull a bit more light right into that pink. And you know, a small filbert will give you a different shape to some of these real quick little flowers. So you notice I pull in, I'll pull out. A lot of it is pressure, guys. I'll touch and, and release right away so I don't drag paint everywhere. I just want to hit the paint, what I call spot the paint and move on here. I don't want to get a whole lot of stuff going here. You know, maybe uh, a little bit more light. We can pop a bit of that energy right out here. And I love the drag as well. So I get like the idea of a pedal, the movement without all of the power of it there. So it starts, up, you know, looks like a pedal, but it's not. So this is very contemporary way to paint here and leaving the, uh, some of those colors and, and edges and stuff. And it's, it's, and look at it, you know, we're, we're 10 minutes into it, you know, setting something like this up. And it's just a heck of a lot of fun. Let's uh, take a bit of that red, that red violet, push some of that right down in here, and then some of the light right down here. Just so I'm looking at the heaviness of it there, so I'll drag it down in almost the shape of these little flowers right down here, coming down that side there, see? Why not? And you'll look at uh, all different kinds of ways. So, you know, like when I'm, when I'm kind of looking for some ideas of doing that, you may take like an old masters and how they dribbled flowers down the side, you know, a couple hundred years ago when they painted that. And then a contemporary artist would say, okay, we're gonna whack that off and blur that and push more color into there. And uh, you get a lot of ideas that way. Let's finish up some of the centers here so we can see some more. We'll take a little bit of yellow oxide onto our, our corner of our brush and we're gonna tap that around. That's our low intensity, more opaque yellow, which will help take out just a little bit of that movement, okay? Then we'll grab some of our Darulite, maybe a bit of our yellow here, and we'll go tap some of that around. Now pick a side, I'm gonna pick this upper side right up here that I'm going to uh, maybe make a little more contrast in here. A little more Hansa. I don't always like to use the same color too, too long. I like to change it up, okay? Now, if you get like too much, you can always just kind of lift that off and blur it a bit here. And the clear gel lifts stuff off really nice just by itself because, it, and it'll blur the edge of it really nice there. And uh, let's go back and hit that again. Boy, I like that. Let's just drag that out a bit. I love, boy, that looks really, you know, sometimes you have these things. Let's just grab some of that. Let's just stroke across it. I did this on daisies a long time ago with you. We'll wipe our brush. Let's put a little bit of the gel in it so that you've got a nice transparent and just pull that out. Look at that movement out. And just pull that movement. Now you can reset the light. We'll put a little gel into it here so it's not completely opaque. And we can reset the light, just touch it up on top. And look at that beautiful color streak that you get there. Let's try Happy Accidents. This is what creates techniques, guys trying stuff like this and, and, you know, playing around a little bit, you know? Let's push some of that right in. Boy, look at that color with that. Okay, try not to screw it up now. See, and have some fun with it. This is fun. Let's just pull this through and pull it out. Lift off, pull that out a bit. That gel pulls it, see, but it gets that transparency at the same time. That That's real pretty. Let's get some, so then we'll come back with some light and just hit the light edges here for some of that light right up around. Let's chisel right across the front so that help turn the petal here a bit, turn that little blossom. That's really kind of pretty, that color moving out through there like that. You know, and it all starts with an accident. It all starts with trying something, pulling it through, grab a little gel, 
pull it out. This is how I create. This is what I do every evening. And sometimes a little accident turns into a beautiful technique. Let's um, take that lighter and soften that in there. Okay, we'll just pick this up. So basically that red, what I ended up doing with all of that bright red is it starts becoming some of the petals. And you can do this. You can take a softer bit of that red, put some gel into it here so it's thick, but yet a lot of gel so it's a bit transparent here. You can check your transparency right out here. A little bit more. Check your transparency here and just paint out here for some movement. See, just a little bit of movement out there with that. And uh, yeah, that, that looks cool. Just push that around a bit. Got a little bit of that movement there. Let's take some of that and some of these yellows here. Let's just pull out right out here like this. Boy, I love that spot. Boy, that, that really came out great right out there. Just pull that color out. Just pull that out right out there like that. Now, we'll set that in here. And we'll set a little bit of light into that. Let's bring this petal back up a little bit lighter, heavier light, so it sits up on top in the painting just a bit more. Has a bit more power in the painting. We can push to, uh, or use some, um, use some of that thick gel in your brush here to lift off here and pull that color through. Boom. Pinch wipe and pull through here. It just gives this a real pretty. See, I love that. Look at those colors in there. Let's drop a center of some burnt sienna in there. You could do a, a green in there. That would be pretty as well. A little burnt sienna though I like. Let's go right to Hansa Yellow and do a smaller little touch of Hansa Yellow. Why? Because it's more contrast and I've got that other yellow orange over there and if I use that just that yellow orange again I might start to get an opaque look so I'll jump up to the pad bypass that one and go right to this one because that yellow orange is already in there and it gives me just a little heavier and a little bit more contrast to that color here like that so those are real that's real kind of that's a uh, boy it's almost very Christmassy. We're getting to that season, so yeah. This let's uh, let's add just a few maybe yellow greens, nice maybe some bright yellow greens here. Hansa, pine green, some gel medium kind of in here, so and uh, brightness to that. Maybe just a touch of white into that, and. Don't mix it too well. Model it up a bit so you get some color variation. I want to stay a little bit away from that area there. But, oh, that green, and let some of that red show through. See, that gel makes it a bit transparent. So let some of those, let's get a little bit more of that. Let some of that trans, the, those colors show through. See how I strike that? Some of the colors show through. Gives you a different, and see, this is how I, not only do I, you, you come up with these different techniques, but you practice them and you practice how much paint is doing something. On something that's just a little board and a little bit of paint, you're, you're practicing so much, it's gonna help you. Look at this quick little movement of that down through there like that. Let's push just a bit of that right out here. Look at that prettiness of that color traveling up and through there. And we can go a little bit more of a mark right in there. Just take some of that. You can push that flower petal on top or blur those together like that. That's kind of pretty. They see a bit of that green, which, you know, complements to the, to the violets and reds. We don't want to get too close. I like this area there, so I want to preserve that. But let's just pull some of that around. You can go a little darker, cooler spots. Take a bit of your red-violet in that green. That's a real dark, cool green. 
you can add that in and look at the contrast that that adds in especially like if I spark it right down around in here just a little bit using just a corner of my brush here and just doing a little bit of drawing here just put some of that around and you can uh, maybe add a little bit of burnt sienna to that and the idea of a few stems would be kind of nice you know some stem movement some of this color around like that just really different very contemporary little uh, you know call it something really unique like red and white blossoms or something like that you know and, or pow red and white blossoms something fun something unique you know it doesn't take you very long 20 minutes you know to do something like this it's fun it's practice and um, you know we can pull a little bit more of some of those colors out over here let's take a and as I pull out I'll thin over here with some extender so as I just grab some of those colors and just move some of it a little bit further out out to here I'll use that extender so I don't have the power and you know how much now I got some of that color maybe put a little bit of the yellow nice bright color in here we can go some thicker white you can really get some nice thick light strokes right up here to finish up if that's what you want to have T take that and pull in and out take a little bit of that gel medium and pull in and out you know but uh, hit the hit the light petals one more time with some additional texture here and that really causes your contrast and those to to stand out we'll take a little gel here just lift out just a bit it's up to you nice thick paint here and uh, pull those uh, blossoms like that and uh, maybe uh, one or two little right out here just soft just to carry that white color back down again you know out here just an idea I'll do that you know several times in a painting just drag and and some of that light sometimes you know well let me just put it this way a lot of times I do that just for color just to get those little sparks of color in there it's not necessary really to to do anything other than just to show that color up in there you know I don't have to paint any shape I just need to move that color and that's what becomes really pretty in there so yeah they're fun and this is just a fun little uh, just a fun little boy I like that that nice bang contrast of that red violet right I mean quinacridone violet right there at the end Ooh, that's pretty good just boom that'll that'll grab somebody right there just add a bit of that here and there a little more contrast a little bit more very contemporary look through the painting there and a heck of a lot of fun and we take that we go grab like this frame that we showed on the last one there see you go drop that into a frame that's just real pretty like that very contemporary look to the painting and uh, you know you could come right in here with some of that you know if you put just oh, let's just do it just just a mark or two of some of that darulite right in there I know that sounds like nuts but you know just a mark or two and see a lot of contemporaries will do that just because that color that warm cool that color that play of the color you know and there'll be people that like it and there'll be people that hate it then there'll be people and I never really hate anything I there's things that I, I wouldn't hang in my house but I you know I'm an artist my you know I like all different kinds of looks but there'll be people there'll be a few people that absolutely love it and uh you know yeah that's see it moves that color all the way through there and you get that and it doesn't need to be you know this is like all the years in the 40 years that I've been a colorist and studying color colorist and chemist I uh, in studying color you don't actually need the shape as a matter of fact great colorists like Frank Cavino always said in in his writings that 
you know, people will buy, you know, a, an object for color first before they even know what it is. They'll just go, oh, wow, that color. And when I used to teach a lot of interior designers colors, color harmonies, one of the things we always know is I said, you know, um, when you are, you know, you're you're doing something, you're painting something for them. If they, you have a client that's coming in and, and looking at paintings and stuff, they'll see, they'll immediately start to match it to what goes into their interior of their home. So you have to use at some point in time some popular colors. You can use some wild colors like this, little color spots, but you have to use some of the popular colors that are, you know, that are trending during the day. So those people that are redecorating and seeing some of those colors, if they see it and they recognize that color in their home, because the first thing that pops in their mind is, where am I gonna put that? If I buy that painting, where am I gonna put that in my home? Or where is that painting? That, or that painting will fit perfectly in my dining room. Because they're seeing the colors, not necessarily the theme, you know, it's the colors more than anything else uh, is what they're buying from. And that's what Frank Avino said and a lot of other great colors said, and I totally, totally believe that. And, um, and I've noticed that to be very, very true. People buy a lot of things for colors, you know, uh, to, so you, you get some of those colors in there. That doesn't make you make, mean you make everything polychromatic and do everything that way, but uh, it can be nice. But see, you take a painting like that. Now, see, you got a, you got a soft little painting. You got this wild little thing there. See, and it just stands out. And you know, you get back from that just a little ways, and that's a fun, that's a fun painting there with a lot of nice color and stuff in it. And, you know, less than 30 minutes, you can get that down there and practice something like that. That little blurring of those colors out of the center, that's fantastic, that's good stuff, okay? So this is all part of brush ups. We're gonna try some of these things. I'm gonna show you guys some of the stuff that I do. Just get wild and crazy and create and, um, you know, then we'll do some of our other bigger paintings here. We've got a lot of paintings coming here to the channel in the uh, the next couple of months, especially trying to gonna try to fit in a lot of stuff for you as we go into holidays, holiday painting, gift giving, stuff like that, because uh, keep everyone really creative, okay? Thanks for joining me. Don't forget to hit that, forget to say that on that peony. So go back to that peony if you haven't, and hit that like button. Hit that like button. That like button does a lot for us, guys. It really does. You know, watch as much of the video as you can. If you want to support our channel, you know, we have the memberships and stuff like that, which we, you know, we do the live class with our membership and we uh, do other things and stuff. But, uh, you know, and, and I know it's not for everybody, but if you just clicking like and watching the video all the way through helps that as well. So, if, you know, if, if you can support our channel that way, we'll show you a lot of fun and we'll have a lot of fun painting together, okay? All right, I'll see you guys in just a day or two and we'll do the next one, okay? All right, see you then.